After that very long, dramatic pause from when I first asked the question, I will ask one more time. What is the difference between a sequence and a series? Sequence is a list. Series is a sum. Great. So sequence is a list. Series is a sum. What does a sum mean? Add, yeah. It means you add up all of the values. And so when we are looking at sigma notation, sigma notation represents a series. And we can be asked to expand that series, or we can be asked to evaluate that series. Expand means I plug in the values, and I stretch it out into its sum. And then evaluate means I actually find the sum. So those are the two things that I can do. Well, if a series has a sum, we say that the series converges. So the basic definition of converge, and this is very basic. When you get into calculus, they go a little bit more into depth. But the basic definition of converge is to have a sum. OK? So what, with what we're doing, if a series has a sum, it converges. To diverge means the opposite. It doesn't have a sum, or it can't find the sum. And so if you think about being able to find a sum and sigma notation and series, what kind of series would you guess have no sum that we can find? Any thoughts on all the different kinds of series we looked at? Is there a type of series out there that there's no way I could add it? Beautiful, infinite. Not geometric necessarily, but infinite series. How do you add an infinite amount of numbers? Does that seem possible? No. It is, though, if certain criteria are met. So we are going to decide if a series converges or diverges for starters. Okay. Number one, what do we look for? One, is the series finite? Is it? If yes, then it converges. If no, then I don't know yet. I have to do some second looking. So is the series finite? If my answer is yes, it automatically converges. Okay? If my answer is no, I go down to the next step. Do you guys know what finite means? Comes to an end. So finite series would look like this. 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8, done. Or in sigma notation, it would look like this. n equals 1 to 7 of 2n. Done. It has an ending. These are called finite series. So if it's a finite series, it doesn't matter what kind of series it is. If it has a number of values, a countable number of values, then I can just add them up. Is the series infinite? That's where the troubles come into play. And what do those look like? So that would be something like 2 plus 4 plus 6 plus 8 plus dot, 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 dot. Or it would be something like n equals 1 to infinity of 2n. Those are infinite. If my answer is yes here, then I have to arrow over because I ran out of room. I have to check two other things. It could still 
converge, or sorry, it could still diverge if it is not the right type of series. So if my answer is yes, I have to look for one other thing here. Arithmetic. If my answer is yes, it diverges. Is it geometric? If my answer is yes, oops, I don't know why I put that second arrow here. I need to look at R. So if my answer is yes, check out R. What we're looking for in R is a size that is going to make this series not endlessly grow. And so if my R, actually my absolute value of R, is greater than 1. Let's go even greater than or equal to 1 then it diverges because what happens in that series is I end up getting numbers that are too big to work with. If absolute R is less than 1, then it converges. Basically, another way of saying absolute R is less than 1 means that I have an R that falls between negative 1 and positive 1. Really sliding down the side there. Okay, a lot of writing. Didn't give enough room. Apologize for that. This is our checklist. Does the series end? Yes. Then it converges. Does it not end? Meaning, is it infinite? All right. Then I look at two other things. Is it arithmetic or geometric? Mm -hmm. Arithmetic mm -hmm. diverges automatically. So infinite arithmetic diverges. Geometric, it could converge, it could diverge. Mm -hmm. Is it growing infinitely? Meaning, is R big enough to make the terms get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger? If so, it diverges. I can't figure out if some of it's growing too much. Is R a fraction? a value that is less than 1 or between negative 1 and positive 1, it's going to make every term get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller, then yes, it converges. So I need it to be infinite, geometric, and also to have the right size r in order for my infinite series to um, converge. So looking at the problems on the bottom, I'm just going to slide it up there, pull this back. Of these problems on the bottom, are there any, if we assume every single one of them is infinite, okay, because a finite series isn't going to give us a problem. It's always going to converge. If, I shouldn't say every single one of them, I think 11 is not. But if these are infinite, if there are infinite series up there, are there any at all that will not converge. So start by looking for arithmetic. Do I see any arithmetic sequences? Infinite arithmetic. Anybody see an infinite arithmetic? Two? Two? What's R, what's D? Uh, nine. Plus 9. Plus 9. Automatically diverges. How do you know it's infinite? Uh, dot, dot, dot tells me infinite. So this one is 
infinite arithmetic. Okay? Any other infinite arithmetic that we can say diverge right away? Six. And we know that because up here it said problems five through eight are infinite. So this is infinite arithmetic again. Therefore, it diverges. Okay? All right? Any other infinite arithmetic? Twelve? Twelve? How do you know? Uh, the problem on the right. The yeah, the formula that we use that's very, very arithmetic looking. It's got a dn plus a sub zero. So this is infinite arithmetic so it diverges okay great anything else I don't think so okay all looks good all right let's try and find anything that is finite anything finite that we can guarantee converges right off the bat yep number four how do you know Because there's no dot, dot, dot. Okay? Definitely converges. Anything else? Finite. 11. Comes to an end. How do you know? It says top. top. Top number and make it stop. So this is a finite series. Therefore, it converges. All right? So infinite arithmetic automatically diverges. Finite automatically converges. All the rest of these must be geometric. So I am going to take a look at them and decide. <clears throat> Is this getting smaller and smaller? And infinite. What is R? One fifth, beautiful. So is my R between negative one and positive one? Yep, that makes it converge. And in fact, again, absolute R is less than 1 is what we're looking for. So if I take the absolute value of the number, it's less than 1. So this is a geometric, infinite, right size R. Let's go to number 3. We've got infinite. Is it geometric? Yeah, what's R? Negative one-fifth. Is the absolute value of R less than one? Yes, converges. Okay. Moving on to five. Is this geometric? Yes. Is it infinite? Yeah, they told us up on top that five through eight are infinite, so yes. R is given as one fourth. Is absolute R less than one? Yes. yes. Converges. Number seven. Geometric. Infinite. Absolute R less than one. Converges. Number eight. Geometric, infinite, absolute R less than 1? No. Diverges. And again, to diverge means it's going to grow so big that I can't possibly figure out the sum. And if I start to generate this, you'll see that this is 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16 plus 32 plus this is going to go on and on and on forever and pretty soon it's going to be so big that I can't possibly figure out what it is. Okay? Number 9. Geometric. Yeah, got that power. It's in the right form. Okay? R is the thing that the 
power is raised to, so my r is 1 half, is absolute r less than 1, converges. All right, number 10, what's r? Two. Absolute R less than one? Nope. Diverges. Okay, so all this talk about converging, diverging, if it converges means it has a sum. So right now we know that it has to be geometric to have a sum if it's infinite. So if it's an infinite sum, um, series, it has to be geometric to have a sum, and R has to be the right size. So if we can have a sum, we probably have to be able to find the sum. All right, let's do it. Sum of an infinite series. So this is the formula for a sum of an inf infinite series. Number one, if it's infinite, it has to be geometric. And secondly, the absolute value of R has to be less than one. Meaning again, that r falls between negative 1 and positive 1. That's just another way of writing that r falls between negative 1 and positive 1. If both of these things are true in my infinite series, then I can find the sum. Now, notice my sum is kind of a naked s. It doesn't have anything with it. There's no little n underneath it. This is an indicator that you are using a sum for an infinite series. All of our other sums have sum of the first n terms, sum of the first n terms, sum of the first n terms, n terms, n terms. Nope. Anytime you see just a, an s standing alone, we know we're talking about an infinite sum. So my s is a, the super most easiest formula out there. The first term divided by 1 minus r. Good? Okay. So I look at the problem, it says state whether or not each infinite series below converges or diverges, if it converges find the sum, if it diverges explain where it fails. Well it's yes geometric, right? Good I know that because there's an R. Is R the right size, is absolute R less than 1? Yes, all good. So my sum is 108 over 1 minus 1 third, or 108 divided by 2 thirds. Or 162? Yeah. yeah. And that's it. So an easy formula pretty nice to work with. Is it geometric? Yes. Is absolute R less than 1? No. So this diverges. R is too big. 13 converges. It converges to 162. That means it has a sum and adds up to 162. Number 15, converge, diverge. Converge. How do I know? R is the right size. 5 fourths over 1 minus 1 third. And I can just leave it as a fraction. If you write it as a decimal, it's no big deal. Sixteen. Converge, diverge. Why? Absolute R is too big. Uh-oh, seventeen. Converge, diverge. Mm -hmm. 
What's R? Careful. Negative one third. Yep. Mm -hmm. So that's the right size. My formula is the first term over 1 minus r. Make sure you watch out for your negatives. It's negative 1 third. So when I do this, I'm going to end up with negative 1 half over 4 thirds or negative 3 eighths. So it converges to negative 3 eighths. But if I start adding these all up, I'm going to get closer and closer and closer and closer and closer to negative 3 eighths as my final answer. Number 18, converge, diverge. I got to converge. What's R? 2 over 3. Nice job. How'd you get that? Yeah, it, you just kind of guessed and checked. Yeah, and especially if you look at the end here, it, it really, you can see that a little bit more clearly. Remember, if you can't tell, just take the second term divided by the first term and you can get that same value. All right, so it's the right size. So I'm going to do my first term, negative 6, over 1 minus uh, 2 thirds. I believe negative 18 is my answer on that one. Nineteen. Converge. One over one minus one fifth. How about twenty? What's our verdict on 20? Diverge. Yep. Absolute R is too big. What if they put it in sigma notation? No big whoop, right? Not a big deal. Which of these diverge? I've got four here, two of them converge, two of them diverge, which two diverge? 23 and 24, why? Yep. R is negative one six or 1.6, absolute R is too big. Here. R is 4, absolute R is too big. So right away by looking at it, I can tell what my R is, decide if it converges or diverges. Diverges means no sum. Converges means it has a sum. If it converges, then we'll be able to find the sum. We converge here. What's my first term? Because I need that for the formula. It's the first term over 1 minus r. What's my first term? If I were to expand this, if I plug in 1, I get negative 48 times 1 half to the 1 minus 1 power. So negative 48 times 1 half to the 0 power. Negative 48. A sub 1 is negative 48. It's right there in the formula. You have to be careful because it doesn't always start at 1, so 
If it doesn't start at 1, your a sub 1 is not going to be that front number. But if it does start at 1, it will be. So this is negative 48 over 1 minus 1 half, or negative 96 when you do your math. All right, converge, diverge. What's the first term? Yep, negative 9 fifths. Great. So my sum is negative 9 fifths over 1 minus 2 fifths, or negative 9 fifths over 3 fifths, or negative 3. So again, if it's infinite, we might have a trouble finding the sum. Therefore, we need to check and make sure that it's geometric and R is the right size. So finish up your homework in the 